Hi, this is lesson 6.3. This is from Extended Calculus by Taylor Shaw. Shaw, integration by parts. And so we come up with more and more integration techniques as we go on and get more involved with functions. So if we have method used for products, so it is a product of algebraic and transcendental functions, or two transcendental functions like e to the x and sine of the x, then we can use integration by parts. One of them we're going to be breaking down, the other function we're going to be building up as far as derivatives and antiderivatives are concerned. So you got to try to work it out and maybe systematically set it up. Well, let's go through the formula first to see how we do this. So if I take the derivative of uv, that's the product of two functions. So we got to do the product rule u times the derivative of v is going to be dv dx and then plus the second which is my v times du dx. Now I want to integrate all these things so I just take the integral of everything that I just had with respect to x and so this is equal to u dv dx times dx, and then plus the integral from v du dx times dx. So I just added an integral symbol and a dx on each one of those pieces that we have above there. Now if we simplify this a little bit, the antiderivative of the derivative is uv. So the ant, uh, if I have just uv, and then this part here, I'm going to take, and I can't really do anything with it besides have u dv. And this part, same thing. I can't really do anything with it but have u, sorry, v du. So what we really want to do is take the product of two functions and the antiderivative of them and solve for them. So I'm going to have u dv and solve for this quantity right here. So u dv is equal to, I'm going to put this on the other side, u v minus v du. There's my formula that I'm going to have for integration by parts. So we're going to start off with two functions multiplied by each other, and then we're going to have to take antiderivatives and derivatives to put them into this formula and then crank it out. So here we have this, but I think that this one is much cleaner. u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. And somebody wrote here ultraviolet... Voodoo. If you want to memorize this formula, ultraviolet voodoo. That's how you can remember it. Notice that V is involved with both of them. So let's figure out some strategy. A lot of times we want U, and we're going to end up taking the derivative of U. So we want it to be the simpler or less complicated piece than U itself. And then we want to have dv be the more complicated part, which you also can integrate because you're going to be working backwards on that. And so also remember that you typically have two, only two choices. If one choice doesn't work, try the other. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Okay, so example number one. Here's a product, and we have something simple and then a transcendental function e to the x. So we're going to try to let u equal x. du is going to be the derivative of that, which would just be 1dx. I don't like putting this down below here. I like putting it across. Then I take and I let dv equal the other function. Well, that would be e to the x. Can I find the antiderivative of that? Sure I can. So v is going to be also e to the x. So to set this up then, the formula I don't, I don't see here right now anymore, but it is ultraviolet, so you're going to go, and then I'm going to go crisp back. So if I do uv, this is going to be x times e to the x 
minus the integral voodoo. That would be my e to the x dx. So that's how you put the pieces together. Start here times this, and then this times this. And so what do I get here? This is done. And I take the antiderivative of e to the x, and I get e to the x. Boom. That is my answer. If you don't like what we're doing, let's check the answer. Remember, I can take the derivative to find out if I did this right. And sure enough, I use the product rule right here, and then I get my uh, minus e to the x. Those two cancel off, and so this is x e to the x. It does work. Sweet, yes. I would highly encourage you to try this one without just following me now. Pause this and try it and see then what, what I do. So I assigned u to be x and dv to be sine of 3x. So then du is equal to dx and v is equal to negative one-third cosine of 3x. So uv is going to be my x times negative one-third cosine of 3x minus my voodoo, which would be ending up plus my one-third cosine 3x dx. So the minus and the negative there put together to be positive. So if I take the antiderivative, I already have one-third there. I take the antiderivative, I get another one-third, so that would be one-ninth then in simplest form, and that's what we get. Integration by parts, ultraviolet voodoo. Okay, so example three is going to be a little bit trickier for us because we don't have two functions that we see there. We just see the arc sine. So this is going to be a little bit tricky, but would you let u equal arc sine? Do you know the derivative arc, arc sine or do you know the antiderivative of the arc sine? Well, the arc antiderivative is what we want to find, so let's let u equal the arc sine of x. So du is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. If I do my dv, my dv is going to be equal to 1. So then my antiderivative is going to be equal to x. And I forgot a dx there. So let's set up ultraviolet voodoo. So this is x arc sine of x minus the integral of x times 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Oh, this is kind of cool. I can do a u substitution here. And we just did a bunch of these. du is equal to negative 2x dx. So I need a negative 2 in here, which means that I need a, po a negative 1 half which makes that positive, then I hope you can finish this up, but this becomes one half the integral of one over the square root of u du. Take the antiderivative of that and you're gonna get u to the one half all over one half. And then I already had that other half and so this is my answer. Simplify this out in front to a one and you are golden. Let's try example number four two-step process. Let's see how that goes. Now, a lot of times when we set up these functions, we let u equal to the polynomial. Why? Because we can eventually break it down so that du is equal to dx or some constant like that. So that's what we're going to try. u is equal to x squared, so du is equal to 2x dx, and then let's set up dv. dv is equal to the sine of 2x, so then my v is equal to 1 half cosine of 2x. So I set this up now as uv minus vdu. And notice the 1 halves cancel there and all that kind of stuff. All right, so now I have this process here. I might have to do integration by parts again. So I go ahead and let u equal x, du is equal to dx, and then dv is equal to cosine 2x, and v is equal to 1 half 
sine of x, uh, I'm sorry, 2x. And I believe I missed a negative sign in here someplace. Let me sort that out. Yeah, I forgot it up here again. Okay, so then that would make this positive. That's okay for us. So then I set up this piece that's in black here with a uv, this one here, x times 1 half sine of 2x minus my uv, I'm sorry, my v to u, and that would be 1 half sine of 2x dx. And don't forget that I already still have this one here. So to finalize this, if I take the antiderivative of this piece right here, I'm going to get another one-half involved. So this is going to be one-fourth, uh, the antiderivative of sine, negative cosine. So I made that a half, cosine of 2x, and don't forget Mr. Plus C. There you go. So I'm going to get... And when I forgot this negative up here, I guess I forgot a negative here, too. So I need that negative there. And then plus the 1 half x sine of 2x. And then plus 1 fourth cosine of 2x plus c. That's what we get. Example number five. Once you just see some patterns, then we're going to break some rules and break away from those patterns. This one, I really don't know the antiderivative offhand of ln x. So what I'm probably going to have to do is do the derivative of ln x. So that's the one I'm going to have to do there, and dv is going to have to be x squared. Could try it the other way, but you'll find out you get stuck, and then so then you try it this way. So then du is equal to 1 over x dx, and then v, if I can write v, is equal to x cubed over 3. So I go across, x cubed over 3 ln x minus, go down, cross, and I'm going to get x cubed over 3 times 1 over x dx. Well, that's kind of nice. Things simplify a little bit. This is a x squared over 3 dx. This stays the same. So I take that antiderivative, and that's going to be x to the third over 9 plus c. And it's a minus, so it's x cubed over 3 ln x. Hold the phone, folks. We have a definite integral, so I'm going to have to go 1 to e on this bad boy and plug in those values, and I'm going to get e to the 3 over 3 ln e. Well, what is ln e? Well, that's 1. And then minus e to the 3rd over 9, and then minus, plugging in 1, I'm going to get 1 third ln of 1, which is 0, minus 1 ninth. So if I did all my positive and negatives right, that would be my final answer there. Nice. That's the definite integral, plugging in the values. Then example 6, this is a different technique, completing the square. So there's nothing nice about this one as far as doing u substitution, doing arctan, doing whatever. So what we can do is maybe fit it into the arctan mold. So let's see what, this, what happens with this. If I do complete the square, this is going to be x squared plus 4x. And to complete the square here, I need a plus 4. Well, what is still left over from my 8, if I've used up 4, I'm going to have another 4. So we completed the square on this. Remember, take half of this function, and then, or this value, and then square it to get that one there. And so what is this, or why does this help us? Because now I can go x plus 2, quantity squared plus 4, do the integral of that, dx. This now looks like arctan. Uh, u over a plus c. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, a is going to be my 2. u is going to be x plus 2. So the du is equal to dx. I don't have to do anything else for balancing. So this is simply going to be 
1 over a arctan of x plus 2 over a plus c. That's just a nice little added technique for you for completing the square. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. This last one is off topic a little bit, but it's okay because we have to do all of them anytime, anywhere, any place, anyways. All right, so I, thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day.